the movie is set in England during the medieval ages. At the start of the movie, we are introduced to the king's beautiful daughter, Lady Marian. She is inside the royal bathroom, singing beautifully. Just then, her maid, Broomhilda, approaches her and asks her to get ready. When Lady Marian gets up from the bathtub, it is revealed that she is wearing a chastity lock. It turns out that her father, the king, wanted to protect her from evil men, so he safeguarded her assets with the lock. Unfortunately, the key has been long lost, and Marion has been desperately searching for the man who can open her lock. In the next scene, we see a group of men dancing to hip-hop music. One of the dancers sings about how Prince John and his sheriff have taken over England and are imposing heavy and unfair taxes on people. Elsewhere, in Khalil Prison in Jerusalem, we are introduced to the main character of the movie, Robin Hood. He has been apprehended for fighting in the Crusades and is being taken to the most notorious cell of the prison. There, one of the guards asks him who sent him there, but Robin refuses to answer. As a result, the guard takes out a tongue loosener and punishes him with it. However, Robin still does not budge. Tired, the guard chains Robin next to a prisoner named Asneez, mentioning that he will be back for interrogation again. After he is gone, the two prisoners introduce themselves and become fast friends. While Robin is imprisoned for something serious, Asneez is locked up for simply jaywalking. Soon, they come up with a plan to escape and strike the metal bar which is holding their chains. Luckily, the bar breaks and they are able to set themselves free. The duo then frees everyone inside the cell and collectively, all of them escape through the ventilator. In the next scene, Robert and Asneez are on the beach, where Robin expresses his gratitude towards Asneez for helping him escape. As a sign of friendship, he promises to help him in any way possible. Hearing this, Asneez takes out a picture from his pocket, which belongs to his son, Achu. He then hands over the picture to Robin and requests him to look after his son, who is in England. Surprised, Robin asks how Achu ended up in England, to which Asneez replies that he's an exchange student. Being a man of his word, Robin promises to look after Achu and departs the place. However, instead of traveling on a boat like a normal person, would. He swims all the way from Jerusalem to England. After reaching there, he gets on a horse and proceeds towards his house. Surprisingly, on the way, he sees some soldiers beating an African boy. Robin quickly deduces that it's Achu, as there are no other Africans in the area. He rushes to save the boy and with his exemplary fighting skills, defeats all the soldiers single-handedly. After this, the two get on the horse and proceed to Robin's home, the Loxley Hall. Sadly, when they arrive, they find the house being towed away by a man. Enraged, Robin confronts the man and asks what's going on. The man simply hands him a scroll, and on reading it, Robin finds out that Prince John has confiscated his house for failing to pay taxes on time. Although Robin tries his best to claim that it was impossible for him to pay the taxes as he was jailed in Jerusalem, the man doesn't listen and takes the house away. As Robin wanders the place dejected, he notices his blind servant, Blinken. The two express their happiness at meeting each other after so long, but soon, Robin is devastated when he finds out that his father has passed away. To make matters worse, Blinken mentions that even his mother, brothers, dog, cat, and goldfish perished while he was away. As the two continue talking, Blinken takes out a pendant and hands it over to Robin, mentioning that it was his father's last gift for him. When Robin asks what's inside it, Blinken replies that it holds the key to the greatest treasure in all the land. After a while, Robin introduces Achu and Blinken to each other. As the trio is talking, a boy comes running at them from the woods. Being the kind man that he is, Robin asks the boy what's wrong, and the boy replies that he is being chased by the Sheriff of Rottingham. In no time, the Sheriff arrives with his men and demands the boy back, but Robin refuses to hand him over. As a result, the two get into an altercation, which ends with Robin humiliating the Sheriff in front of everyone. Before he sends the group away, he vows to take revenge against Prince John. Later, the Sheriff of Rottingham meets Prince John and reveals that Robin is coming for them. Here, we get to know that Prince John is acting as the ruler of the kingdom, as his brother, the King, has gone to fight in the Crusades. However, instead of being a just and kind ruler like his brother, he is imposing heavy taxes on people for his own benefit. 
Expectedly, the news scares John, and he starts brainstorming ways to tackle the situation. When he finds no solution, he heads to the dungeons to take advice from his witch, Latrine. John briefs everything to his witch and asks her for a way to defeat Robin. Latrine agrees to help, but in return, she asks John to assist her hook up with her crush, the sheriff. Although the prince is sure that the sheriff will never get close to the witch, he still agrees. Elsewhere, as Robin and his crew are traveling to the castle, they are stopped on a bridge by a giant named Little John. Robin demands to let them through, but Little John claims that they'll firstly have to pay the toll tax. When Robin refuses, the two get into a stick fight. Despite his small frame, Robin manages to defeat the giant and pushes him into the nearby river, which barely has any water. Surprisingly, as Little John does not know how to swim, he starts drowning in the puddle. At first, Robin is taken aback, but when Little John continues to struggle, he helps him up. With this, he wins the giant's trust and makes him a part of the team. Before leaving, Little John calls his best friend, Will, who happens to be a dagger expert. He can slice through anything mid-air with his insane dagger techniques. After the introductions, the group of five start their journey to Prince John's castle. Meanwhile, Prince John and the sheriff are having a party inside the castle. Soon, John's niece, Lady Marion, joins the duo and observes the celebrations. The sheriff, who is infatuated by Marion's beauty, immediately starts flirting with her, but the latter pays him no attention. Just then, Robin barges in with a dead hog on his shoulder and drops it on the royal table. John and the sheriff are left furious by the intrusion, but surprisingly, Lady Marion is impressed. Nothing like a big hog to curry favor with the ladies. Robin then introduces himself to Marion and kisses her on the hand. This enrages the sheriff and he challenges Robin to a fight. Expectedly, Robin cleans the floor with the sheriff, so the prince is forced to call upon his guards. Robin fights valiantly for some time, but he is eventually outnumbered. When all hope seems to be lost, Robin's gang barges through the door and starts attacking the guards. In no time, they subdue all the bad guys, impressing the entire crowd, including Lady Marion. Before leaving, Robin warns Prince John to reduce the taxes, or else he will eliminate him next time. In the next scene, Little John gathers some men to fight for the cause, but Robin fails to inspire them with his boring speech. Instead, he makes them fall asleep. Seeing this, Achu steps forward, wearing his specs, and delivers an inspiring speech, despite it only being three sentences. The crowd gets riled up, and they agree to fight with Robin against the tyrannical prince of England. The next morning, all the men get dressed as Robin Hoods and start training. Robin and Will lead the training, but the men are so bad that they cannot even defeat some dummies. Meanwhile, at the castle, the sheriff invites an Italian mafia named Don Giovanni to assassinate Robin. Giovanni Giovanni has come with his two associates, Dirty Ezio, a mute assassin, and Filthy Luca, a multiple-time gold medalist in archery. After a bit of chatting, the two come to the conclusion that they will lure Robin by organizing an archery competition in the palace, and Filthy Luca will defeat him in it. When the crowd turns against Robin and calls him a loser, Dirty Ezio will assassinate him secretly. The plan makes everyone excited, and even Dirty Ezio, who cannot speak a word, starts laughing. Surprisingly, Lady Marion is hearing the entire conversation from her balcony. Worried, she immediately wakes up her maid and briefs her about the situation. The two discuss for a while and decide to sneak out of the castle and warn Robin of the impending danger. Marion calls her horse, jumps onto it and lands safely, but when it's Broomhilda's turn, her horse simply moves away, causing her to drop onto the floor. After a while, they reach Robin's camp, and Marion reveals the sheriff's evil plot to them. At first, Robin vows to stay out of trouble, but when Marion mentions that the palace is going to organize an archery competition, he starts having second thoughts. Even if his life is in danger, he has to attend the festival, if there is an archery competition in it. Following this, Robin puts on a show for his men and starts singing behind a curtain in an operatic voice. Although he takes out his sword, the boys on the other side of the curtain think that he has taken out something else. After the performance is over, he takes Marion to a secluded place to express his feelings for her. However, as he proceeds to make out with her, he realizes that she has been locked with a chastity belt. Marion then reveals that her overly protective father put the device on her so that she cannot have any fun before her marriage. 
Hearing this, Robin nopes out of there. I mean, he tries to kiss her, but they are stopped by Broomhilda, who mentions that they are getting late. With this, the two depart on their horses, but not before vowing to meet Robin again. In the next scene, we are taken to the palace where the annual archery competition is about to commence. Several skilled archers have come from all across the land, hoping to win the ultimate prize. As expected, Robin's men are also there, but they are disguised as women. On the other hand, Robin has worn the attire of an old man. Soon, the competition begins, and only two men are able to hit the bullseye. The two men are none other than Filthy Luca and Robin. Seeing him, the sheriff immediately deduces that it is Robin in disguise. Meanwhile, Dirty Ezio is hiding in a nearby tower, ready to shoot Robin. As the first round between Filthy Luca and Robin ends in a draw, they are instructed to have one more go at it. Robin goes first and once again hits the bullseye. He then removes his disguise and reveals himself to be Robin, much to the delight of Marion. However, when it is Filthy Luca's turn, he takes good aim and pierces through Robin's arrow, hitting a double bullseye. This gets the crowd going and they start cheering for Filthy Luca. At the same time, they jeer at Robin and call him a loser. Robin is in shock as he is never supposed to lose in an archery contest. Hence, he takes out the movie's script to check if everything is fine. Luckily, he finds out that he has one more shot left. Prince John and the sheriff also check their scripts and confirm the plot. Wasting no time, Robin takes out his arrow, but just as he is about to shoot, Filthy Luca pushes him, causing him to fire his arrow up. Surprisingly, the arrow travels through the air through the entire audience and lands on the bullseye, Kobe, thus making him the winner. This proves that movie writers can do anything to make their heroes victorious. As Robin celebrates his victory, an envious sheriff orders his men to arrest and execute him. This worries Lady Marion, so she vows to marry the sheriff, but only if he lets Robin go. The sheriff accepts the proposal and leaves the place to prepare for the wedding. In the next scene, a hangman places a noose on Robin's neck, just in case Marion changes her mind. Soon, the sheriff arrives with a minister, followed by Marion herself, who is dressed beautifully for the occasion. She is accompanied by her uncle, Prince John. As Robin watches everything unfold, the marriage ceremony begins. The sheriff accepts his vows immediately, but when it is Marion's turn, she hesitates. This gives Achu an opening, and he cuts Robin loose with the help of an arrow. With this, an intense battle ensues as Robin's men start fighting with the guards. Amidst the chaos, the sheriff grabs Marion and forces her into his room, attempting to make love with her. However, as he proceeds to deflower her, he notices the chastity lock. Determined, the sheriff brings a drilling machine and attempts to break the lock, but it's of no use. Just then, Robin enters the room and challenges the sheriff to a duel. The two go back and forth, and during during the action, Robin's pendant shatters and a key emerges from it. Surprisingly, the key lands in the lock and fits perfectly, implying that Marion's virginity is the greatest treasure in the land. Why did Robin's dad have that key? The boys are distracted for a while, but soon resume their fight. After a lengthy tussle, Robin accidentally stabs the sheriff with his sword. As the sheriff lies injured on the floor, Latrine approaches him and mentions that she has a pill which can save him from death. However, she will only provide him with it if he promises to marry her. With no options left, the sheriff agrees, and after being saved, he is dragged away by Latrine. In the final scene of the movie, Robin and Marion get married in front of everyone. Just then, the king returns from his crusade and condemns his brother for being cruel and evil. He orders his men to lock John away, and at the same time, rewards Robin for his bravery and valor. The king also returns Robin's house and lifts all the unfair taxes imposed on the people. The movie ends as Robin and Marion finally kiss each other. In the post-credits scene, as Robin tries to deflower Marion, he finds out that even with the key, the lock won't open. The movie ends as Robin calls for a locksmith. Fun fact, during the entire course of the movie, Prince John's face mole changes its location several times. Gross. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.